repa replace your roof or, or have uh, your gutters cleaned or that type of thing. Uh, and then social activities. Now, social activities might not sound like a support possibility, but it really is because isolation is uh, leads to depression. And there's some studies that are indicating that, particularly among older adults, if I can move to there rather than intergenerational, there, there is a real increase in depression. So having social activities so people can get out of their house, connect with other people, is just a really important role that this neighbor-to-neighbor -neighbor, uh, effort can provide. Next slide uh, is just a list of some of them that exist in our county already. Now, some, they, some of them use the name village because there is this whole village concept that was talked about at the 2011 uh, South Forum. But you're going to go away with this, so you can, if you want to do a little research, you can look on some of these websites and see these nine that already exist in our uh, community. And there actually are more, I probably have to update this, there are more that are, are smaller than these. These are some of the bigger efforts. Okay, the next slide um, talks about some models and approaches to neighbors connecting to neighbors. And this first one, called the concierge model, is very highly structured. These can be super structured, they can be more simple. And so, I'm not going to spend a lot of time on it, because that's really not what we're focusing on tonight, but if you and some others in your neighborhood wanted to set up a nonprofit and have paid staff and charge membership fees, so that you could access a whole lot of vetted service providers, businesses, and so forth, and have it be a little like a concierge in a motel, I mean a hotel where you just hang up the phone and you ask for something, you get it. We'd be more than happy to help you set that up, but that's not gonna necessarily be what we're trying to encourage this evening, but we want you to know that that is a possibility. What we're gonna focus on more is something called all volunteer models. And this is where uh, it's volunteer led, you don't have to pay a fee, you don't even necessarily have to set up a nonprofit. Uh, it can be very loosely structured or it can be a little tighter structured. Uh, but the, the whole idea is that within your community, you're going to find out the needs that people have and you're going to find out who's willing to volunteer to meet those needs and then you're going to connect them together. So it's, there's not going to be any money going out of anyone's pocket uh, to set up this program. So then there's um, a couple more models. One is the next page of the virtual connection model. Now, most of these um, neighbor to neighbor programs or villages all have some type of website or maybe a listserv or some way of connecting. But then there's some that do it 100% virtually. And you're going to hear a little bit about that later on. Uh, so we call that the virtual connection model. So there might be a web based program such as nextdoor.com, which you're going to hear about a little bit later, where you can post on there what it is that you need or post your availability and then people connect virtually. Now the next one, the neighborhood network model, this really is what McLean has set up. Your McLean community of village for all ages is what we call a neighborhood network model. And this model, uh, rather than uh, vetting volunteers to do services or, or setting up this motel con hotel concierge model, they're working with existing organizations and trying to connect them together to uh, ramp up and meet some of the needs. And so, they're kind of moving into another phase here with tonight's meeting, which is saying that while we're doing that, we're gonna continue doing that, and they provide resource line as well, the McLean Senior Source. They're saying, let's also help our neighborhoods in McLean set up smaller volunteer pools to help each other. So that's kind of an outgrowth of their model. And then you can create your own model by taking aspects of these or creating one that fits your neighborhood. I have to apologize, I have a little bit of cold. And so I'm going to be dabbing my nose here. Um, so that was very, very brief, but we just want to give you a sense that there's different approaches to this. Uh, and we can certainly give you more detail if we get into starting to develop something. So the next two slides are um, talking about two steps to get started. So it would make sense if you were to start something that you're going to need someone excited about it, one or two people that are willing to kind of get the ball uh, rolling. I say three to five, but it could be two, you know, depending on the size of your neighborhood. And it might be you in this room, or it might be someone else back in your community that we're going to talk to after you leave here. So one of the first things we say you're going to need to do is get a little uh, understanding of the needs of your community and who lives in the community that might be able to lend some support. So we often encourage simple questionnaires. We're not talking about big survey, you know, research-related 
this type of uh, questionnaire. Just something simple that you can take around to the neighborhood uh, and just says, ask questions like, you know, would you like to be here? How long have you lived here? Would you like to remain here perhaps in your lifetime if that's possible? Uh, and what do you think you would need in order to do that? And give you some options to select from. Perhaps some of those service possibilities you talked about. Uh, ask them if they would be willing to help, you know, others who might have a short-term need or more of a long-term need, you know, do they have volunteer time? That, that type of question. And then you need to sort of figure out the geographic area. Now, it might be that area will be right within your homeowners association, your civic association, or what, or just a cluster of homes like you talked about, but you have to kind of have an area that you're going to focus on. So um, that would kind of be step one. And then if you get a good sense that you have a bunch of people interested in helping you get this going and you have people that are going to volunteer, uh, then you might move into having more of a planning committee that kind of just moves forward with figuring out uh, how to get volunteers and and choosing your communication method if you're going to be online or whether you're going to have a listserv or a uh, phone tree, etc. The last slide is uh, where to go for more information guidance after today. And Judy's name is at the top. She's going to be the first point of contact. And she would really like to follow up with anybody who indicates on the one sheet survey, which I think she's going to mention later. Uh, she will reach out to you, uh, or you can just contact her to take the next step. Because you really want to be available uh, to handhold to whatever extent you would like to get something going. Now, that was a real quick run through. I mean, maybe you wrote down a question or two, I'm not sure. But you're going to get the more interesting part is going to be the next phase, which is the next presenters, where you're going to hear something that they've actually done in their neighborhood. And the first one is Bishop's Gate. Pat Williams is making her way down the aisle to the front. Uh, Pat Williams is, um, lives in Preston and uh, has been working with Preston for a lifetime, which is a bit of a similar model to the McLean one. And they also have been encouraging developing these smaller uh, efforts in their neighborhood. Uh, Pat also chairs the Long-Term Care Coordinating Council, which I provide staff to in my job. We also have our um, vice chair, Courtney Nuso, back there, who is right here from McLean. So Pat is going to talk about something that a very small neighborhood did to connect each other and uh, help each other, and it's called Bishop's Gate. there was a naturally occurring village. In the simplest form, people were supporting each other, and it was a village of all ages. And I think the people in this neighborhood got together more so because their children were in school together, they were boarding the school bus together, and as people aged in place, they continued to support each other. And I'd like to tell you about this very, this is the simplest of all villages. And if you have a neighborhood that you would like to, to uh, start, this is a wonderful way to start. This is the, the Bishop's Gate model. I gave it that name because that's the main road into their development. But I need some volunteers. And I would like to ask, um, I sort of had my eye on you. Are you pretty good on the, on the internet? You, yeah. Uh -huh. Would you help me? Okay. I would like to uh, nominate this lady as our neighborhood coordinator for our example today. And if you could stand up and just show everyone that you're the neighborhood coordinator. The neighborhood coordinator has gotten a hold of a directory for the neighborhood. And she also is online, but she has a telephone contact as well. So she is going to be able to uh, email, you're going to be able to email her or call her, and she's going to be able to email you back or call you. And um, we could call her the neighborhood coordinator. We could call her the, the village coordinator, the cluster coordinator. If it's a, uh, she could be the head of the, the head of the, or the chairman or the president or whatever you want to call her of, of the cluster. Or she might, if it's just a block. She's our neighborhood coordinator. Now, I want people to be able to email our neighborhood coordinator. And so some of you are going to have some needs. And I'd like you to, if you wouldn't mind uh, speaking into the microphone with, uh, with 